We're continuing our tutorial with Flutter and Flame. Currently, we have a parallax background using the parallax component of the Flame system. The clouds and the mountains are moving separately. The, the crow is a sprite component. And we're going to convert the crow into a sprite animation component so the wings can flap. We have our, our crow here as a sprite sheet that we covered in the previous video. We're just using the first frame. We're going to use the rest of the frames in this tutorial. So let's go into the main dot dart file. Currently we just everything's in one file. We have our crow game right here. And below that there's the decorator with the onload method. So above the onload method, I'm going to specify a late variable in Dart, sprite animation component, crow. The sprite animation component is from the flame game system and I can use it because I imported the components right there. So instead of a sprite component for the crow right here, we're going to have to create an animation. First I'll do animation. That's a variable that I made up. And I'm going to await. I'm going to load the sprite animation right here. And it requires a path to the file, which is right there. Through 350. It's just another file. 400.png and it's going to require some uh, sprite uh, animation data. In the flame system, there's a sprite animation data sequenced information here. And we have to fill in some of these. So the first is the amount. And if you count the amount of crows, we have we have twelve. So it's one, two, three, four, eight, and then twelve. So the amount is twelve. The step time is how fast you want it to flap, uh, maybe through trial and error. Uh, step time is 0 0.1 and the texture size since in the previous video I calculated the texture size at 350 by 400 and that 350 by 400 is simply the size of each cell on the spreadsheet so it's one one of these And since there's four crows per row, we're going to specify it so it knows when to wrap it. And what is that in here? So it's the amount per row. And there's four crows per row. Now we have our uh, animation data, but we still need to build the the sprite animation component, which we start off up here. We have a sprite animation component. We haven't initialized it yet. So we'll go crow, and then we will instantiate the sprite animation component. Animation uh, crow equals sprite animation component. And the animation will be the crow animation that we just created right here. So the position and the 
size will be the same as what it was previously for the sprite component and instead of adding the sprite component we're going to add the crow which is now a sprite animation component crow the crow is uh, 350 by 400 so I'm going to use a two position vector I'm going to make it a proportion of the uh, the size, the height of the screen. So if it was completely square, which is not, we could do this. Size of the size of the screen, y by y. But the crow will be distorted. What I want to do is, actually it's We're going to use the ratio of the height of the crow to reduce the distortion of the crow. In the next video, what we want to do is apply some type of gravity velocity to the crow so that it's falling down. Eventually, when you tap on the screen, it will counteract the gravity uh, of the crow to try to keep it in level flight. But the first step is to add the gravity. Well, subscribe to the channel and learn how to apply velocity to the crow in the next video. Have a great day.